Good evening, I'm Shane Jones, leading the news at 7. Grand Kadumet band leaders are getting a $50,000 increase in the subvention they receive from government for putting their bands on the road. They'll also be vying for an additional $30,000 in prize money for the various competitions they take part in on that day. This from Culture Minister Stephen Lashley as he updated the media on the latest developments surrounding the Cropover Festival during a press briefing at the ministry's Sky Mall headquarters. It followed a meeting with several band leaders and the representatives of the Barbados Association of Masqueraders also at the ministry. The BAM had earlier demanded a 100% increase in the monies given to its members for the festival. Minister Lashley says he wants to see the bands reflect the more indigenous traditions of Barbados. And this can only be done if the band leaders are given the financing that they badly deserve. The festival requires allocation of resources for it to be the kind of global festival that it is. And certainly I've asked the NCF to review the submissions that have been made with a view to ensuring that that can filter through to the estimates process for the, um, the next cycle. But in the meantime, I felt that the requests of the masqueraders um, are sufficiently reasonable that I should not ignore that request. And I've agreed that uh, in relation to the subvention that we will look at a reasonable uh, structure for an increase this year of the subvention and also for an increase in the price money. Minister Lashley says the increases will be for 2017 only and representation will be made to the Ministry of Finance for a long-term increase starting in next year's estimates. He adds that the association is also not pleased that its members haven't been able to access the concessions and other benefits under the Cultural Industries Development Act and pledges to do whatever it takes to get the legislation functioning as it should. And I've indicated to the masqueraders that I'll be looking into that along with the Cultural Industry Development Authority to ensure that the red tape or whatever it is that is creating the problem on either side, because part of the role of the Culture Industries Development Authority from the onset is to also hold the hands of those applicants. The system is new, the act is new, we recognize that there will be some teeth in challenges, but the role of the Culture Industry Development Authority, also working in tandem with the National Culture Foundation, is to ensure that it can hold the hands of the applicants, in this case the masqueraders. A major player in Barbados' corporate landscape has joined the local drive to drastically reduce the use of plastic bags in containers. And since the company is well positioned to influence many other businesses, its impact could be significant. Ken Gerson has that story. They're the most commonly used items for packaging. Plastic bags are convenient and cheap but they are also bad for the environment. So bad, there is a global movement to end their use. Here in Barbados, the Williams Industries Group has taken up the cause through NSR Limited, in which it is a majority shareholder. NSR owns Sky Mall and the Bridge Street Mall. Operations Director Everett Eastman explains why they got involved in the drive to get rid of plastic. It's a small island of 166 square miles <laughs> we have to do our best to conserve the environment this focus on plastic bags comes out of an initiative conceptualized last year as part of the williams group's contribution to barbados's 50th anniversary of independence celebrations it involved bringing in thousands of reusable shopping bags and giving them away to member companies for distribution as well as to customers and some charitable organizations. Because of the response that we have had from the public and the people who really want the shopping bags, um, we, we are looking to increase that, 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 um, that program. NSR Limited is well placed to do that, given its many commercial tenants in Sky Mall and Bridge Street Mall. And Mr. Eastman has just returned from a trade show in the U.S. with ideas, one of which is to move from plastic to paper. In America, you can hardly find um, restaurants and things using the foam, foam trades which, you know, proliferate, you know, most of the, 
mostly um, takeaway restaurants, you know, the, because it's a cheaper um, container. Um, and of course, in, if, you, if you go to most of these stores, they're all paper, paper products, uh, you know, with um, logos and so forth. So that is where our initiative is going. He also plans to involve plastic bag distributors, hopefully getting them to import the paper alternative. To have that alternative product so that we can draw from it, right? Because it, it's, uh, it'll be a lot cheaper if we buy by container loads rather than me going out there and buy five or 10,000. So we're not cutting, we're not impacting on their business because they, they will still have a product to be able to sell. Mr. Eastman says he hopes to have the change implemented in a major way by November, just in time for this year's independence celebrations. Kent Jerson, CBC News. Over 20,000 free reusable shopping bags will be imported into the country soon, and they will help to reduce the amount of plastic bag pollution. However, Advocacy Director of Future Centre Trust, Kami Holder, is hoping government will waive some of the duties on them. He was speaking to CBC News on the sidelines of the Caribbean Association of Insurance and Financial Advisors' 31st Annual Sales Congress at the Hilton Hotel this morning. We will write the government within the next two or so weeks so that we can have some definitive answer on, on the importation of those bags because we want to give those bags free. We're getting funds so that we can port those bags. So if we're getting funds, we cannot then go and ask for more funds to pay duties. Her life could best describe as a miracle. Little Donya Codrington was only three months old when both her parents and three siblings died in the 2007 Archcott tra tragedy. However, over the weekend, she celebrated her 10th birthday. Rianne Phillips reports. Miracle indeed. It was a simple twist of fate that little Donya stayed with her grandmother on that fearful night when her parents and siblings perished. Ten years later, she's all smiles. Dressed as Princess Elsa from Disney's Frozen, she posed for pictures with friends at her 10th birthday party. My favorite part is the jumping tank. And you might uh, get to see the rest of my family that I didn't see for so long. Well, it's very nice. I, love, I like it. It's very really speaking my color. And my, my cousin knows my color, so I enjoy it. For her grandmother and primary caretaker Shirley Linton, the birthday triggers many emotions. Her mother is not around or her father nor them to see her and it's heartbreaking, right? Because every year when it comes to her birthday, it, I just remember them there and the, tra and the terrible tragedy that happened in Barbados. I would like that um, the Lord help her with her schoolwork and thing, because next year, God's parallel, she will be sitting the common entrance. It's a balancing act for Shirley, as she's also raising another granddaughter who lost her mother. I would like help, right? Because um, I know um, on the hospital dialysis, right? And, you know, although I own that, I still got to try with the two, two grandchildren, Don um, Katara here, that her mother's death was not tragic. Her mother's death is that simply she was born with a heart problem and she died with it by owing that she did give birth to this little girl. The DLP's candidate for the city, Henderson Williams, has pledged to help the family. We're focused on community. We're focused on building communities, uh, and certainly a tragedy of its magnitude um, 10 years ago would have had a significant impact on all Barbadians. Um, and um, we're going to work with Shirley to play our part. We're going to assist her in terms of getting some of what she needs for, for her granddaughter um, as she goes into 11 plus and beyond. Um, I'm giving her the assurance um, and the rest of, of the community that we'll be working to, to help, them, help her along. One day, the extent of how lucky she is may become clear for little Danya, but until then, her fairy tale continues. Rianne Phillips, CBC News. Constituency councils are not political tools of the government. This was made clear by Commerce Minister Donville Innes. 
The minister, who is also the representative for the St. James South constituency, was speaking during that council's awards ceremony. Lisa Broom has more. The awards were to highlight the achievement of St. James South residents who've been working to uplift the constituency. They included youth awards, commendations for various areas like the environment and community service, while also acknowledging the unsung heroes. Minister Innes says there are several things the constituency councils can do more efficiently than central government, and it's for this reason and this reason only that these bodies were established. As parliamentary representative, I've always said steadfast to the view that we as politicians should not be getting deeply involved in the workings of constituency councils. They really were established to be politically neutral, um, to really focus on the challenges in our wider communities and to do so in a very non-partisan manner. Chairman of the Council Tyrone Law himself expressed concern about what is the perceived political image of the councils. In fact, he says two people who were to be honored declined to do so because of this perception. It is sad that we can become so polarized that we allow such narrow thinking to prevent us from getting involved in a national development. I watch politicians go to lunch together, they beat each other up in Parliament, and then they're good friends. But we figure that we're going to hold enemies and separate ourselves for good while the brothers have good things going. Despite this, though, he says the council has been successful in its mandate, particularly in reviving neighborhood watches. The group is currently working on something called Next of Kin. Next of K. Why in know your neighbor? Because we believe that if you know your neighbor, your neighbor's habits, your neighbor's lifestyle, when they leave home, who accompanies their house and so on, that enhances the security. This is the first time the council has put on the Spirit of St. James South Awards and their plans to continue the event next year. Lisa Broom, CBC News. It's quite an unusual sight. An orange transport board bus. And as expected, it's been attracting the public's attention when moving across the country as it differs from the board's traditional blue and yellow brand. When contacted by CBC News, General Manager of the Transport Board, Sandra Ford, explained it's paid advertising with a company that usually does business with the board. She says it's a contract that started in December 2016 and will end in December 2017. All right, we'll take a short break here and come back with more news. Best 2017. I hope to see you there from the second to the fifth of June. Tell the tell every day with fashion and entertainment, furniture and design, food, services and activities with the whole family in mind. So come to the lawyer skin sandy for center, don't you stick? Be best 2017. Be going back to basics. Be going back to basics. Be next. Yes is a beautiful word. It empowers us. It brings satisfaction. And since you earn up to 3% cash back on everyday purchases with the Scotiabank Gold MasterCard, that's a lot of satisfaction, a lot more often. Plus, you get a welcome bonus from the get-go. Scotiabank Gold MasterCard is the card that keeps on giving, so it's easier for you to create many more precious yes moments. Apply today. Parents, encourage your children to drink more water. Avoid soft drinks and other sugary drinks as they are high in calories and may contribute to excess weight gain. Offer fruit more often than fruit juices. If you offer juice, choose 100% juice and limit to 8 ounces per day. If you are making your own fruit juices, limit the amount of sugar you add. Skim milk, smoothies made with skim milk or yogurt, and calcium-enriched soy milk are other healthy options. This is a message from the National Nutrition Center. Hello friends, this is Jeff Shepard inviting you to join us every Thursday from 6 to 7 on QFM for Nicholas Bacon Inc. Manor. Always fresh.
Barbados has seen an 8.2% increase in tourist arrivals this year. And the numbers are ahead of what was anticipated. This was revealed this morning by Tourism Minister Richard Seeley at the 31st Annual Carifa Sales Congress held at the Hilton Hotel. However, Mr. Seeley says an increase of arrivals does not necessarily mean there will be an economic impact. You have to find ways and means that these arrivals can translate into a greater uh, economic impact. I mean, having said that, the CTO surveys are showing that spend is also up too. So we, we, we are going in the right direction. The investor confidence is up, you know, we all know about the new hotel rooms under construction, so we think we can sustain this growth over an extended period and, and, and to continue to see the economy grow. We heard the governor of the Central Bank speak to that only recently, the acting governor in his, his, his quarterly uh, press briefing. So, so I, I, I think that we're we going in the right direction and, and that's important. Plans are still in the works to make the island's lone hospital a hub for medical tourism. However, the QEH for the time being is focusing on meeting the health care needs of Barbadians. That's according to Head of the Ophthalmology, Dr. Trevor Drakes. You need to take care of what? You take care of your own first. Mm -hmm. And then we have a responsibility to do that. When we can say that we can actually say to a person in Barbados, okay, fine, if you have a problem, you will be seen within a, a certain time span. If you have or you need surgery, your surgery is going to be done. Once we are adequately doing that and we are meeting our targets there, then we can start off our services on the outside. Dr. Drakes believes there is definite potential for Barbados to provide ophthalmic care to other countries as some only have one specialist to serve the entire population. He says the hospital intends to offer a full service to patients who travel here for such care. There are obviously things that we will have to put into place to make their care a lot easier. So it is not just saying, well, we offer the service and you jump on a plane and come. Obviously, it requires it would require a special desk to coordinate all of this in terms of these people would know where they're going to stay, they would be picked up, they would be brought in. So you, you're kind of trying to offer a complete service so that they come, they turn around, it's rapid, they go back and they follow it up. But that, that's certainly in the works and we are definitely going to be pursuing this with some vigor as we go forward. Contrary to popular belief, the Barbados Hotel and Tourism Association isn't opposed to the level of government concessions granted to Sandals Barbados. BHTA Chairman Roseanne Myers made this clear as she addressed the resort's award ceremony for outstanding employees. I want to make the point that you would have heard and team members would have heard a lot of our discussion on the whole question of concessions and what we should get and what Sandals got. It was really never about the Sandals brand. It was really a discussion about fairness that we were having with the government. So we do welcome um, the Sandals brand. Stigma and discrimination continue to be major challenges for people living with HIV and AIDS. But Director of the National HIV AIDS Commission, Jacqueline Wilshire Gay, says the organization will continue to reverse this trend by encouraging behavior changes through its message. She was speaking to CBC on the sidelines of the 33rd International AIDS Candlelight Memorial Service at the Mount Olive Holy Temple United Holy Church of America. Ms. Wilshire Gay says this is critical as the commission seeks to meet the international goal of ending transmission by the of the virus by 2030. We have to continue to work at it. We have made some we have made some strides in a positive direction, but we just have to continue to do more. And that remains one of the greatest barriers, the, the, you know, to really ending the aid because it, it prevents people from taking up the services, you know, that, and the persons that are prevented from taking up the services by this stigma and discrimination are usually ones that are most in need of them. So we want everyone to continue to help us in this area. More Barbadians need to be aware of the symptoms and the effects of guillain barre syndrome. This observation from one of the seven people living with the condition locally, Dawn Drayton. She spoke to CBC during a joint fundraising and awareness boosting expo at the Divi Southwinds Resort. Rianne Phillips tells us more. 
These 23 vendors joined with scores of Barbadians at Divi South Wales to support Dawn Drayton. It was early in 2016 that her life changed suddenly when she became ill with GBS. That rare and serious condition affects the nerves, the feet, hands and limbs, causing problems such as numbness, weakness and pain. Now in February 2016, I was diagnosed with guillain barre syndrome. As a result of that, I developed a condition with my hips called heterotopic ossification and I need to have a surgery which is only available, not available locally, so I have to travel to Miami. So I started a fundraising drive and Indulgence 4 has so wonderfully come together with the fund and proceeds from what you see going on here today will go towards my fund and my surgery. Her journey has been difficult. It's been traumatic. Um, paralysis and having to deal with physical limitations and then there's the emotional component of it. It's not a very easy illness to deal with and because of the because of the rapid way in which it comes on, one minute you're good and then the next minute you're not. It's a lot it's a lot to process. Apart from collecting funds at the Indulge Expo, Dawn has also launched her own wristbands. The wristbands are basically hashtag help Dawn walk again and hashtag Guillain Barre syndrome awareness. Now we are offering these at $5 each, which will go towards the contribution. Despite her challenges, many believe she will walk again. She's been given the challenge to be able to walk by August, and when she walks in August, she's going to be able to then, she wants to go ahead and continue to raise awareness, especially on the disability in general. There's a lot with our um, surroundings and all of our buildings that there's a lot that we need to do just for people in wheelchairs, people that are disabled to be able to get around. Dawn has been posting her journey on Facebook and on her blog at www.dawndrayton-gbs.com. Contributions can be made to Dawn at CIBC First Caribbean International Bank or Barbados Public Workers Credit Union. Rianne Phillips, CBC News. After the break, we'll take a look at stories making headlines across our region. Diamond Dazzler, it's time to play. Diamond Dazzler, the new instant $250,000 scratch game from the Barbados Lottery. Available at select lottery outlets. Secure your future, be financially strong. Station delivers the soundtracks of your life. Hey, we're 94.7 FM, the university of musical diversity, the most frequently frequented frequency in the Caribbean. And the Admiral. Like Put on your dancing shoes and get on the dance floor. We've got all of your classic jams right here at 94.7 FM with me, Jaquila, in the midday. Day. Valentino Tech Auto all over your radio right here on 94.7 every weekday afternoon, 2 until 7. It's your afternoon getaway. So join me right here, the greatest hits of the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, and now. now, now, now. Oh, 94.7 FM. Judges, prosecutors, and other judicial officials across the region will be better armed in the fight against money laundering. They're attending a three-day anti-money laundering workshop launched at the Radisson Aquatica this morning. The crippling effects of money laundering are undeniable. So much so that the Department Against Transnational Organized Crime and the Regional Security System Asset Recovery Unit found it absolutely necessary to organize the workshop. 
They're doing so with the support of the governments of Barbados and Canada. OAS Representative Ambassador Francis McBurnett says the seminar will go a long way in dealing with the challenges of organized crime. The Global Economic Survey 2016 estimates global money laundering transactions at 2 to 5 percent of global GDP, or approximately 1, 1 to 2 trillion US dollars annually. Despite these estimates, studies by the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime show that less than 1% of global illicit financial flows are being seized by national authorities. 40 solid recommendations have come out of the 2016 Global Economic Survey, and Canadian High Commissioner to Barbados, Marie Legault, believes governments must get on the ball immediately as the consequences may be disastrous. Failing to tackle money laundering, allows criminals' activity to, to continue. And with the numbers that we were talking about, they have the resources to continue. This, of course, as we know, has a negative impact on all sectors of the economy. Banking and financial systems especially, foreign direct investment, macroeconomics, and it enables the entrenchment of organized crimes in our level of society. As you know, because of this, because of money of counterterrorism, of terrorism activities, um, the banking system has had to increase its regulation around the world. Um, and as a result, one very direct impact in the Caribbean is the corresponding banking issues. Barbados Director of Public Prosecutions, Charles Leacock, hopes the workshop gives birth to a new partnership. Not only among law enforcement and the judiciary to enhance the resilience of the system, but also to work with the other sectors of the financial sector, namely through the financial intelligence units and the banking sector, because it's the loss of corresponding banking relationships that's impacting significantly on the profitability and viability of financial institutions. Attorney General Adriel Brath would endorse the workshop, saying criminals have a professional approach and so should governments. The criminal element has more resources than most of our national economies. And just like how we sit down and do training like this. They sit down and do training also. And in fact, they have the resources to, to make available to themselves the best accountants, the best attorneys, you know, the best resources to, to work out how can we get around the laws of the, our respective territories. The workshop ends on Wednesday. Former St. Lucia Prime Minister Dr. Kenny Anthony is concerned the ongoing Desert Star Holden saga will only serve to further divide the country. The multi-billion dollar development located in Beaufort will occupy about 900 acres of government and privately owned lands, coastal, agricultural and traditional grazing areas. The opposition, as well as environmental and other groups, have spoken out against it. Dr. Anthony believes the investor needs to revisit the way in which the project is being implemented. No foreign investor should attempt to put um, his investment at odds with a section of the people of the country. It is in that vein that I go back to the DSH agreement. Mr. Tio King should avoid a situation where the country is in open conflict with what he is trying to do. If he continues with the development the way he has insisted that it go along, then you are going to create a permanent environment of hostility. A peek into the world of sports is just ahead, but before we get there, here's a tip from Cooperators General Insurance. 